Eric Smith, better known in the streets of New York City as E Moneybags, was a notorious street hustler and rapper who made a name for himself through extortion, dealing in the streets, robbery, and even putting out hits. Hailing from Brooklyn Sunday Projects, E Moneybags went to high school with some of the biggest names in hip hop history, including the likes of Notorious B.I.G. and Jay Z. In his early days, E earned his name as a result of his unwavering desire for money, which he would often resort to ruthless methods to acquire. As one of Brooklyn's most ruthless stick-up kids, he built a reputation with friends and enemies alike before he moved back to Lefrac City in Queens with his mother. Once there, E adapted very quickly to street life, making a name for himself by associating with big rappers such as Nas and Prodigy and Havoc from the iconic hip-hop duo Mob Deep. He also became affiliated with the rap crew Live Squad, which consisted of members such as Stretch, Majesty, and DJ Kalo. One of his closest friends, however, was the one and only Tupac Shakur, who he would form a very close relationship with and would even visit him in prison during Tupac's nine-month stint behind bars in 1993. E Moneybags was a man who always trod the line between musician and gangster, although he did end up launching a single album in the late 90s, which he titled In E Moneybags We Trust, he received much more attention for his illegal activities. One of the most infamous incidents he was involved in occurred in December 1990 when Smith's crew and an opposing crew began to argue during a showing of The Godfather 3 at the Sunrise Multiplex Cinema in Valley Stream, Long Island. The argument quickly turned into a shootout that claimed the life of an innocent teenage bystander by the name of Tremaine Hall and injured another three moviegoers. Although Smith could have made a name for himself in the rap game, the last years of his life were marked by a series of conflicts with other rappers, hustlers, and dealers, one of whom ended up taking his life at the age of 32. Even though E Moneybags had formed a good relationship with Jay Z and even helped push his rap career before he was famous, E and Jay Z would end up tangled in a legendary feud after E felt disrespected by something Jay Z did while he and his crew were freestyling on Hot 97 FM in the year 2000. The argument with Jay Z was fortunately resolved soon after but fate had something much more dangerous in store for E Moneybags. After making a $1,000 down payment to buy a luxury car from Kenneth Supreme McGriff, leader of the infamous street hustler crew, the Supreme Team, E Moneybags changed his mind and requested a refund from the Supreme Team. When McGriff refused to give him back his money, E sought him out and attempted to assassinate him. The assassination attempt was south. However, when E accidentally shot Colbert Johnson, better known as Black Just, another Supreme Team member who was sitting in the car with McGriff. This was the event that ultimately triggered E Moneybag's demise in July of 2001. Beloved by his friends as a supportive and reliable friend, and hated by his enemies for his cunningness and ruthlessness, E Moneybag's left his mark in the streets of New York City and is remembered as a street legend to this day. This is the story of Eric E Moneybag Smith a true Queen Street legend. E Moneybags was born on November 19, 1969 in Brooklyn, New York. In his early days, he lived in the Brooklyn Sumner Projects, where he took to the street life from a very young age. He attended Westinghouse High School in Brooklyn, where he met the notorious Big and continued to make a name for himself as a stick-up kid and a hustler. It was also at this time that E was introduced to Sean Corey Carter, better known as Jay-Z, by rapper Sauce Money, who was married to Smith's first cousin. Even at an early age, E reportedly had bad blood with Jay-Z. The source of the conflict is unconfirmed, but it would serve as a precedent for a much more infamous feud that would take place almost 15 years later. After high school, E moved to Lafrag City, Queens with his grandmother. Having been raised in the streets, E Moneybags adapted to Queens extremely quickly and wasted no time in building his legacy as a hustler and a gangster in his new borough. In the early 90s, Moneybags started spending time with rappers who had made a name for themselves in music and had come from the streets just like him, such as Havoc and Prodigy from the legendary hip hop duo Mob Deep and Nazir Ben Alu Dara Jones, better known by his stage name Nas. 
His relationship with these rappers had a big influence on E Moneybag's decision to later launch his own rap career. E had been living in the street life from the time he was a kid. He knew the life of a real gangster better than anyone else. Hanging around big rappers like Prodigy and Nas, he saw how much money they were making, the clothes they were wearing, the flashy cars they were driving, the beautiful women that always surrounded them. And he knew they had made that money by rapping to the world about a life that he himself was living in the rawest possible form. Whereas rappers like Nas had taken a step back from the streets to pursue their careers in music, E was still a street hustler. And this would become one of his main motivations to try his luck in the rap game later on in his life. In reference to the amount of money that he saw could be made with music, E would once famously say that rap was like stick up without a gun. E was constantly spending time with big rappers and soon decided to give hip hop a try. He started freestyling with some of the rappers he had ties with and pretty soon his name was well known all over Queens, not only because of his reputation as a ruthless gangster, but also because he was a talented MC and had connections with some of the biggest rap names in the area at the time. Even the likes of Jay-Z would benefit from E's connections in the industry. Reportedly, Jay would constantly send E his tracks and mixtapes for him to show to his contacts in different radio stations, which is why it's often said that E Moneybags helped Jay-Z's career take off in its early days. Despite his connections, instead of fully dedicating himself to his music, E Moneybags trod the line between musician and gangster on a daily basis. One of the most infamous altercations he was involved in took place on Christmas Day 1990 at the Sunrise Multiplex Movie Theater in South Valley Stream, New York. On that day, E was watching the premiere of The Godfather 3 with other members of Live Squad, the rap crew he was associated with. The crew consisted of members Randy and Christopher Walker, also known as Stretch and Majesty, respectively, as well as DJ Kalo. About an hour into the movie, some members of Live Squad, including E himself, began arguing with members of a rival group who were sitting in a different section of the packed movie theater. At some point, Live Squad opened fire and what followed was a shootout that had tragic consequences. Sadly, as it often happens, four innocent bystanders were shot. Two of them would be hit in the arm and neck, but would ultimately survive the incident. A third, a 17-year-old boy, would also survive but tragically lost his eye. The fourth person, 15-year-old Tremaine Hall, was not so lucky, however, and died at the scene after being shot in the head in the crossfire. Although E. Moneybags was one of the shooters who opened fire and 25 shell casings from 15 different guns were found at the scene, police would never manage to trace the crime back to E. Moneybags and he was allowed to roam the streets as a free man for 10 more years. After the incident, metal detectives were installed at the entrance of the movie theater to prevent similar incidents from happening. In the early 1990s, Live Squad became well known for their collaborations with the legendary Tupac Shakur. And as a result of the rap crew's close association with Pac, E Moneybag soon began forming a close friendship with him. Smith and Shakur's relationship cultivated extremely quickly, not only because of their similar backgrounds, but because they would do street dealings together as well. After all, Tupac had also come from the streets, and E appreciated the fact that Pac was just as passionate as him about bringing people together to fight against police brutality. Their relationship would grow even stronger when in November of 1993, Tupac was accused of sexual assault, for which he was sentenced to nine months in prison. During that stint in prison, the only Live Squad member who frequently visited the rapper was none other than E Moneybags. Even Tupac's friends from Queens stayed away from him at that time, but E always stayed loyal. One year later, on November 30th, 1994, Tupac was attacked by three armed men and shot multiple times in the lobby of Quad Recording Studios in Manhattan in an infamously vicious setup that could have cost him his life. One of the bullets even grazed his skull, and while he was at the hospital recovering from his injuries, E Moneybags visited him frequently, and he was one of the only people who told Tupac who had ordered the hit on him. At that point in time, E had also befriended the likes of 50 Cent, Noriega, and Cormega. 
further strengthening his ties to the rap game. Partially as a result of his strong connections in the hip hop industry in the late 90s, E Moneybags began to take his rap career more seriously, releasing his first and only ever in 1999, which he titled In E Moneybags We Trust. Although the album was by no means career making for E, it made waves in the rap industry as a result of the collaborations E had made with other rappers for the album, which included Nas, Nature, Capone, Cool G Rap, and members of Live Squad. More than anything, the album spoke to his status in the streets and showed the entire hip hop industry just how well respected E Moneybags was in Queens. In the year 2000, however, an incident took place that would make E feel more disrespected than ever and would spark a legendary feud with Jay-Z that is still remembered in the hip hop community to this very day. That year, Jay-Z went on Hot 97 FM to freestyle for Funkmaster Flex with other artists from his label Rockefeller Records. Joining Jay for the freestyle on Hot 97 were Memphis Bleak, Beanie Siegel, Emilio Sparks, and H Moneybags, an upcoming rapper who was considered Jay's protege. Before they started to freestyle, Memphis mentioned that it would be a good idea to introduce H Moneybags to the world and to use the segment as an opportunity to promote his music. Nobody thought the rapper's name would end up causing so much controversy. At one point during the freestyle, Jay-Z asked Funk Flex to shout out the number of the station so that listeners could call in and talk to the rappers. At the time, Prodigy was with E-Moneybags and they were both tuned in to the station, listening to the freestyle live. It was then that Prodigy, at the request of E, called in the Hot 97 and asked to talk to Jay-Z. As soon as he heard Jay's voice, he handed the phone to E-Moneybags. And that's when things got interesting. Giving out the station's phone number was supposed to be a fun way for the rappers to connect with their listeners. But things took a very different turn when E attacked Jay-Z, calling him out for allegedly disrespecting him. E interpreted it as a serious offense that Jay-Z would present an artist with an extremely similar name to E's when he had done so much to earn that name for himself and he was just breaking into the hip-hop scene. In the past, the two had shared a long history together. And in 1995, E had been on a behind the scenes video of Jay-Z's dead presidents, along with the notorious B.I.G., but what hurt and enraged E the most was the fact that he had played a big part in Jay-Z's early success, showing his loyalty and friendship by showing Jay-Z's music to his radio contacts when he requested it. However, Jay-Z didn't seem to care and refused to apologize for the incident, even reportedly responding with the whatever. To this, Moneybags answered, you know me and you know how I get down. I don't put in work for this name. Feeling disrespected by Jay-Z's indifference to the words E told him, when I see you, you know what it is, and hung up. After he hung up the phone, E Moneybags called his friend Nas, who also shared a friendship with Jay-Z. When he heard what had happened from E, he immediately called Jay and confronted him about the situation. Allegedly, during that call, Jay-Z responded to Nas' complaint with the infamous phrase, tell E Moneybags that I make music for people who make money. This was not only disrespectful to E, but to Nas himself, who was also from Queens and had come from the streets. Following the argument on Hot 97, E Moneybags recorded two diss songs aimed at Jay-Z, the best known of which was The Gospel, in which he said the following, Jay wanted Nas in his Dead Presidents video. Who the hell you think he hollered at, yo? He then continued to call out Jay-Z for the incident on Hot 97. Although none of this ever provoked a response from Jay-Z, the song acquired major significance in E Moneybag's legacy as it was the last song he ever recorded. After E came out with the diss track, everyone on the streets was well aware of the tension between the two artists. The beef between Jay and E Moneybags took on a specifically dark note Considering the number of rappers that were losing their lives in New York City at the time as a result of similar conflicts, fortunately, a middleman soon came into the picture who would defuse the situation and put the two rappers to sort out their differences. And that man was Sauce Money, the very same rapper who had introduced them to each other years ago. Although he claimed in a 2019 interview that he wouldn't necessarily take credit for the issue being sorted out, he did facilitate a conversation between the two. And thanks to his intervention, the feud ended peacefully with no casualties. 
However, this is when E Moneybags got involved in another major conflict, one that would ultimately end his life just months later. Around December 2000, E became interested in buying a luxury car. After all, having a flashy, expensive lifestyle was one of the main reasons he got into the street life in the first place. At the time, the most notorious drug crew in the area was the infamous Supreme Team, run by no other than the notorious Kenneth Supreme McGriff. Although the Supreme Team was no longer enjoying its glory days, they still exerted a tremendous amount of influence in the streets of New York City, and as a result, had access to some of the flashiest luxury vehicles in the city. As the story goes, E contacted a member of the Supreme Team to buy a car and was asked to put down a payment of $1,000 for the car, which he did. However, the car took too long to be delivered to him and E ended up changing his mind about buying the vehicle. When he reached out to the Supreme Team to get his money back to buy a different car, Kenneth McGriff allegedly refused to give him a refund. Enraged, E Moneybags took justice into his own hands and did something even more extreme. A couple of weeks later on, E Moneybags was walking out of the Coliseum Mall in Jamaica, Queens, when he saw Supreme sitting in his truck outside the mall. At that time, E Moneybags didn't notice that Supreme was sitting with fellow Supreme team member Colbert Johnson, also known as Black Just, in the passenger seat. Wasting no time, E ran up to the car and opened fire, hoping to take out the notorious Kenneth McGriff. However, not only did he fail to hit Supreme a single time, but accidentally killed Black Just. Years later, sources familiar with the matter, such as former Supreme Team member James Antney, better known as Bimmy, would go on to explain that the hit was an accident and that Moneybags was deeply regretful of having assassinated Black Just. However, the damage was done and Moneybags knew that a price would be on his head after assassinating such an important member of the notoriously ruthless Supreme Team. In order to protect himself from Preem's wrath, E. Moneybags banded with other rappers who shared a similar hatred for Kenneth McGriff. Among these rappers was Curtis James Jackson III, better known as 50 Cent. However, this wouldn't be enough to save him, as weeks later an incident took place that would ultimately claim E.'s life. The day was July 16, 2001, and E Moneybags was hanging out with Stretch's brother, Majesty, at a barbecue at Majesty's house. It was around 9.45 p.m., and the two were smoking inside E's Lincoln Navigator because they didn't want to smoke in front of the children at the barbecue. Majesty then went to the backyard to get more food, and as soon as he went inside, four gunmen crept up on E Moneybags while he sat smoking and eating in his Navigator. The gunman fired around 40 rounds into E's vehicle, hitting him over 10 times and leaving him at the scene. When Majesty came out again, he saw his friend slumped over in his seat, lifeless. Although he had his gun in his hand, he didn't have a chance to fire it before the hailstorm of gunfire by the assailants. Before ordering the hit, Supreme had ordered the gunman to record the whole incident for his later enjoyment, which would ultimately be a huge mistake. In February 2007, Kenneth McGriff was found guilty of ordering the assassination of E Moneybags, reportedly putting a price of $50,000 on his head. He was sentenced to life in prison for this and other crimes after police found the tape at his house in Baltimore, Maryland. In the video, which was filmed from July 13th to July 16th, E can be seen driving and parking his car on the streets where he would later be gunned down. The video was shot by Dennis Crosby, an associate of McGriff, and Nicole Brown, Crosby's girlfriend. Although E lost his life at the age of 32, he is still remembered to this day as one of the most vicious street hustlers in Queens history, with a legacy that extends into the world of hip hop, where he is often talked about and shouted out in songs by other rappers, thanks to his valuable contributions to rap culture. With his close connections and friendships with some of the biggest names in the industry, he had the potential to make a career for himself in music, but sadly, his commitment to the streets cut his life short before he could ever discover his true potential.